Hey, hey, he, hey, he, hey, he's comedy. Com <laughs> oh boy! Oh, oh, breathe. Oh, that's funny, boy. This is gonna be a good video today. Oh, that man said, "Dead beat dad." Oh man, broke up a happy home, betrayed your wife and kids, <sighs> going on trips, spending the taxpayers' dollars, unbelievable, scamming, thefts, criminals, put your hands behind your back! <sighs> Fanny, Fanny, unbelievable. Uh, I gotta see what Doug has to say about this. He even titled it Fanny Will Fanny Willis Commits Felony. Nathan Wade, a deadbeat dad. I got to see this video. I have to check this out with my beautiful family. My beautiful patriots around the world. I hope everybody is blessed, well, healthy, and that nothing but the best is going on in all you beautiful people's life. Happy Friday that you got through the week. Uh somebody said, Rick, I know you ain't wearing it, uh, uh, you ain't took a bath. Look, I mean, I got like five of these shirts from my dad, okay? Rest in peace to my father, man. I got so much of his clothes and stuff, and he passed down so much stuff to me, man. Uh, Y'all know I lost my dad a couple, month, a couple months ago. It's almost been a year, and if you watch my OK Rick channel, you, you know my whole story. I've explained it on here. Um, I've had to clean up my, my dad's blood with, it, with my own two hands, you know, out of our childhood truck with over 300,000 miles on it. And I tell y'all... I miss my dad every single day, man. He supported me. When I had a thousand subscribers, zero, two, three, four subscribers, you know, he saw, he, he, he believed in me. You know, okay, Rick, he believed in me, y'all. It all started with my main channel. You know, he watched my channel on his, on his lunch break. My dad was two years from retiring. Two years from retiring. All he talked about is, you know, Social Security, pension, and, you know, retirement check, and being at home, and being able to finally relax because he worked so hard his whole life. A lot of people are, ch are chasing the American dream and are, are dying right now, you guys. This is why I always wish health, that you guys are healthy, that you're blessed, that you feel good. You know, that you're in the right state of mind, your, 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 your mental health. People are tired, exhausted, working two to three, four jobs. Stressed, depressed. Suicide thoughts, man. And we and don't even get me started on the ones who made the ultimate sacrifice, our veterans, the ones who put their life on the line every single day. I love y'all, man. So let's check this out. Salute. Before we get into this video, salute to all our dads out there. Support your kids. Love on them. Be there for them. No matter what decision they make, no matter what mistakes they make, be there for them. And kids, be there for your parents. Shout out to our grandparents. We're here in this very, very fast time travel, y'all. It's a very, very, very fast time travel. You know? I know I come on here laughing and I feel good. If I feel, I, again, I'm all right, y'all. Because I'm here with y'all. You know what I'm saying? And I get to come on here and spread love, laughter, good energy. But I also want to keep it real in my content, man. I miss my dad every single day. So I tell y'all, don't take this time for granted, man. The spirit, the, 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 the energy, our energy and spirit lives on forever. But we can't, you know, this body, we, we eventually, we're getting older. Time is going by and things are changing. So I hope you're ready for change. We encourage everybody to go vote. 2024 is our year, beautiful people. 2024 is our year. I love y'all, man. Yes, indeed. Y'all ready? Let's see what Doug is talking about. Link in the description box down below. Y'all go show Doug some love. And let's go and jump straight in, man. Oh, boy. I can't wait to see what he had to say. Because when I when I checked this uh, situation out this morning, I was like, boy. Boy, boy, boy. And then I seen Doug's title, Dead Beat Dad. I was like, boy. boy. Y'all be there for your kids, man. Love on your kids. But again, you never know what somebody's going through. So 
That's why I'm not here to judge y'all. I'm not here to bash on you. I'm only here to love on you and spread a positive message. Salute to all our parents out there. God bless all y'all, man. Let's check it out. On Fonnie Willis. <laughs> Fonnie Willis is America's favorite legal car wreck. What trouble. Uh, we got brand new news. She's so sloppy that she committed a felony in recording someone without their permission. Nathan Wade, catch up. He's in trouble with his wife in court. And we're going to do a little catch up on our buddy, Harrison Floyd, too. This is going to be a great episode, so I'm really excited to show this to you. Now, well, if you checked up on our last, our last video we did about this, and we did it with A-Dog, man, this whole, it is, it is actually sickening. It's saddening, you know? Like, I, they all need to just be removed, you know, like, just removed. It's, it's sick. Welcome to Doug in Exile. I'm Doug to Naple. I'm in exile. It just means I'm not home yet. Okay, I got <laughs> kicked out of Hollywood. Now we're here on YouTube doing the news. So let's go. Is this case still on trial to start before the election? It very well might start before the election. I don't think the case is at all going to end before the election. The American public will not have a verdict, now, even according to Fanny Willis's most optimistic preview of her own schedule. So Fonnie Willis's case so far is scheduled for August. It'll start there. Remember, Trump is right now in the Stormy Daniels thing. Starts in this month. So that'll book him through. They say that could take at least six weeks, but it'll take longer than that. It'll be two months to see the jury. How do you get a fair jury in New York? Good luck with that, guys. And Merchon is, of course, totally compromised. But having these court cases, this one could end up, Fonnie Willis's, if it starts in August, it would go right up to the election. They're not going to resolve that thing. Trump's going to be sitting there in court. Remember, the New York one is a criminal court, so he has to show up to that one. And instead of campaigning, his message and his brand is, I'm in court. And so far in the polls, it's shown he wins because of it, because America hates what's being done to him, even if they hate Donald Trump. But what Donald Trump has proved a master of um, in these numerous trials is that he is going to use the legal system and take it as far as he can. And he's got the resources to do it. The average citizen wouldn't be able to delay the way that he has, but because he has the resources, he can do it. That's Elisa Farah Griffin of The View, who has a terrible legal opinion saying Trump has the resources to do all these delays because he's not an average citizen. But what average citizen gets targeted like him, yeah. taken off the presidential ballot, rem you know, removed from states, having five bogus, especially the Stormy Daniels one, totally bogus, made up indictment. Bonnie Willis inventing RICO charges like they've never been used before. It's fair. What Trump is doing is fair. You use every resource you have to fight the Leviathan state. And like Harrison Floyd said, we don't give up down to the last man. Now, here's the great Phil Holloway. He's got a great YouTube channel. I hope you guys will look for it. He's doing Inside the Law. What a killer show. Former paramour, uh, Fonnie, or Fonnie Willis, Nathan Wade, has been uh, accused by his wife, because he has not yet divorced, his wife in the pending divorce case. He's been accused of essentially failing to honor his agreement we have a word for that failing to uh, to honor your agreement. It's called being a deadbeat husband and a deadbeat dad. Mm. That's the new theme of this episode. Nathan Wade, deadbeat dad. <laughs> the temporary order covers the Oh, man. Whoa, whoa, boy. I'm telling y'all, man, be there for your kids, man. If I can go on another fishing trip, another good old manly talk, laugh with my father, man, change the oil in our driveway or the garage like we used to do. I would trade it in for anything in the world again, man. I tell y'all that, man. You know, he died on the way to work, man. Had a heart attack on the way to work. And we couldn't find him until a couple days later. Didn't even get to say bye to him. And didn't even get to, you know. Be there for your kids, man. Y'all keep being amazing people. Things like financial obligations, whether or not people have to pay medical bills or other types of support. And the remedy, if the other side doesn't live up to their end of the bargain, so to speak, is you have to ask the judge 
to enforce the order, and that's called a motion for an application for contempt. Nathan Wade's getting an application of contempt slapped against him by his. She's still his wife, but she's uh, you know an ex. They're in the in divorce proceedings because she's having some kind of a colon procedure. It's medically affecting her. She's losing weight. She can't keep a job. He already has a deal with her that he's supposed to. Like, it's like we said in our last video, she is going through it, man. And I don't wish that on anybody, man. Like I said, I've had family members go through the exact same thing. You know, I've seen family members literally just shred, you know, because of these in those situations, you know, medically. So I don't wish that on anybody, man. So this is just a, it's just. Ugh, you know, you know, it's just a sick man to pay for her medical bills. And we know he's flush with cash. We have a defendant's application for contempt. So he already agreed to pay this. She asked him for the money. He, he's not even supposed to pay her. He pays the office directly. Plaintiff will pay. That's Nathan Wade. He will pay all uncovered medical expenses for his wife apart from any elective cosmetic procedures until further order of the court plaintiff that's wade will additionally pay routine dental and vision care with a cap and he went to her and said you pay it and i'll reimburse you how trustworthy is your word when you broke a marriage vow plaintiff informed the party's daughter an upperclassman in college with hopes of entering medical school in the near future that he would discontinue payment of her rent and her living expenses, instructing her to get the money from yeah. your mother. Wow. That's Nathan Wade's daughter ready to go. She's upper in upper division already. She's ready to go to med school. And he said he wouldn't pay her bills. He's cutting her off. That's the kind of guy. I just want to say this is how it actually plays out. When Fannie Willis claims to be a public servant, and I'm going to help the inner city. We already saw what she did to Amanda Timpson, misspending her grant money that's supposed to go to troubled inner city, predominantly black youth. And they're spending it on, I, on uh, Apple computers, stuff that is illegal by the grant's own provision, not to spend it on. But this goes into the whole mindset of how much can you help Nathan Wade? Nathan Wade, how are you helping the inner city when your own family is needs your help your daughter you could put this young black lady in med school and you cut her off and say get your money from your mother so now you're trying to weaponize the family against your ex and punisher party's mm. son is currently well, in europe sick. pursuing that's a career sick. as a soccer player a pro soccer player despite the plaintiff executing a verified like I said, everything they're reading off we've already read we like i said we've We've already covered this, you guys, if you missed our previous video. Like I said, we did it with A-Dog, but I just, I, like I say, we wanted to get Doug's, um, oh, what do we call it? Two cents, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he goes in more into detail on his videos. David to the country of Spain, <clears throat> affirming a financial responsibility for his son's expenses for visa purposes, he subsequently informed his son after the temporary order was entered, that he would no longer be providing support for him either. Directing no, the son to get the that? money from your mother. So there's Nathan Wade's son now going to be a professional soccer player in Europe. He needed help with some visa stuff, a little money here, here. Nathan Wade cuts him off. And again, I, I'm not too much into that business of when you cut an adult person off. It's more he goes, get the money from your mother is what he said, told both his kids. That's the kind of man he is. Oh, and remember, this is before Nathan Wade got uh, stepped down from his job. So he was currently making $670,000 a year, and then he cuts off his kids. So this is before he stepped out of that job. And he said, go ask your mother. And now this is Harrison Floyd's lawyer stepping up to bat here, and he cracks me up. Yeah, and this so, is before he was even out of the case. I mean, he's still making money at this point. 250 bucks an hour. Right. Yeah. And that's just on, and look, he's hours a day, by the way. just in the case. And so Phil Holloway <laughs> goes, in case you didn't hear it, he goes, by the way, he's charging 250 bucks an hour. And Chris goes, yeah, and he's billing 24 hours a day. <laughs> now, I'm no Stephen Hawking uh, philosopher of time, but I don't think it's possible to bill 
for more than 24 hours in a day, given the nature of time. And Nathan Wade has maxed out even the laws of physics. A plaintiff's sudden cessation of support for the party's children has placed the defendant in a dire financial situation, resulting in a monthly income of less than $1,000. Additionally, defendant cannot work due to her poor health. As a consequence, she finds herself in a worse financial condition than she was prior to the entry of the consent order. So Nathan Wade's wife, she's living on, that's $12,000 a year, well below the poverty level, all because of him. He wouldn't pay the bills, so she had to take her alimony mm. payment that he paid her, and she had to cover her kids' basic needs. What a dad. Harrison is, um, is, is one of the defendants in this case. Here's what we know so far. And what a great time we had with him yesterday. We got a third episode is coming out later today. 147,000 mail-in ballots were counted, but the county did not do any signature verification. So those ballots yep. should not have counted. And that if you missed our video we did this morning, we spoke up on it. We did a whole video on it. Yep. I'll leave it for y'all to check out at the end of the video, man. Violate state law. The only Georgia Trump co-defendant to spend time at the jail received a $100,000 bond, but he's going to stay in jail at least for another night. So at this hour, supporters of Harrison Floyd have started collecting donations online, referring to him as a political prisoner. They have now raised almost $300,000 to pay for his bond and his legal fees. We've been trying to raise money for him. Link in the description where you can help pay his legal fees. And so we're, we want to be part of that. We want to help this guy out. His lawyer, Chris Kacheroff is with us and he's going to uh, tell us more about his appeal and what's going on. Okay. So that's Chris Kacheroff. That is Harrison Floyd's lawyer. Now here's some of the back data on what happened with Harrison Floyd and it involves Ruby Friedman and the elections and all that. Floyd is the former director of Black Voices for Trump. In Fulton County, he's facing charges related to the alleged harassment of county elections worker Ruby Freeman after Georgia's 2020 presidential election. Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis's spokesperson said Floyd never worked out a consent bond like the other defendants that is before turning himself in. He got stuck in the bed bug infested hellhole known as the Fulton County Jail. His family was getting repeated harassment from Fulton County, uh, demanding to know where he was and what he was doing. And they said they knew what kind of person he was. Now, for your viewers, there's another parallel case going on in Maryland. It's a federal case now. It had been a state case, but two FBI agents who worked for the Jack Smith, they were trying to serve a subpoena on him and didn't identify themselves. And there, there's an allegation that uh, Harrison engaged in an altercation with them. It's not true. And the facts are that case is pretty interesting in and of itself. And he was, he was denied he, bond in Fulton, in Fulton, Fulton County, a magistrate down there who said he was a flight risk. Now, get this. The guy turns himself in voluntarily and he's a flight risk. FBI agents show up on my doorstep. So Jack Smith sent two goons out to Harrison Floyd to serve him papers. That's it. But the papers didn't match up, according to Harrison Floyd. They didn't look right. The whole thing was botched. What a clown show all these people are. Clown From Jack show. Smith to Fonnie Willis to Nathan Wade. Shit show. Guys, this is the B team. This is the D team. <laughs> he was holding a two-year-old daughter. He walked upstairs. He was walking upstairs to his apartment. Had to get through a secure door with a, a gate key. He swipes the gate key, and these two individuals follow him in. And telling him they want to talk to him and he said i'm not interested in talking to you i don't know who you people are and they said well we we have we want to discuss some stuff with you and he kept walking up he didn't he said there's two white guys chris i don't know who they are i got my two-year-old daughter and they're following me and so he starts to go up the stairs and uh he said he felt like that they were pulling on him or tugging on him and he fought he didn't fight he just literally uh shoved off and went upstairs to his, his room or his uh, house and put his daughter in and as he opened the door, these two people threw paperwork in the door and said, you're served. And it turned out to be a subpoena for Jack Smith. I don't know what that is. I'm not touching it. I'm not picking it up. That's, that's one. I'm sorry. Things happen. Um, I end up getting arrested. Well, listen, guys. listen. I am a detective from Montgomery County. Here's my badge. These guys are officers of Rockville City and this is the FBI agent. I do have an arrest warrant for you right now. Okay. Okay. When you look at the subpoena, it doesn't look like a real subpoena. It's pretty apparent that their job was to come and try to c c 
create, cultivate a situation where there was a reaction. Yeah. Eight hours later, the local police department comes to his uh, his, his uh, apartment with uh, several other officers, and they arrest him. And the the charge is battery on a police officer. Now the local the local police did that. The local police did that for the FBI agents who never made the report. Harrison is the one that called. And so what ends up happening is the day before the hearing in the state court, it gets dismissed, and uh, the federal court, the federal the Department of Justice picks it up and indicts him on on a federal charge. Hmm. I think it's bogus. I think it's a triable hmm. case. It's a triable case. But where's all the civil rights leaders coming out for Harrison Floyd? Huh? What? You can't hear anything. Can't hear anything. No funding. No help. Sorry, Harrison Floyd. You're in the wrong party. The party that is in bed one for one with this state, with this corrupt, politicized, they're using law that's supposed to be neutral. They're using it just to win one party's election this fall, guys. You've got to vote Republican. You cannot vote Democrat. And I mean, not even for dog catcher. Don't don't scratch a box next to a Democrat. Now, obviously, a little bit of political pressure mounted because Fanny was going after him, and uh, she, I guess, felt the heat and sent a couple of her 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 uh, minions over there. And they asked him if he wanted a bond. He said he did, and they said sign here. And he said, "Can I have my lawyer look at this?" And they abruptly turned and walked away. Uh, by by the way. Fanny did reach out to us, my, my colleague, one of my colleagues in Maryland, and was rude and abrupt with him on the phone. And and he was dealing with the Maryland case. I was dealing with the Georgia case. And uh, she ended up recording him. You know, Maryland is a one part, I mean, a two party state. Uh, both parties have to consent. I'm sorry. So are you saying that, that she illegally recorded a phone call? Oh, yeah. It's a felony in Maryland. Uh, here's Newsweek. Fanny Willis hit with a new accusation. We like Woo! new accusations. <laughs> Because this is the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> you know, because Fonnie Willis, you can't just be corrupt or unprofessional in one way. From the time she took the stand, you go, holy moly, this is a car wreck of humanity. Her whole past, the more you hear about office workers in her office, how she treats Harrison Floyd, how she deals with the FBI, even how she interacts with Jack Smith with all these uh, flights up to Washington or her Caribbean cruise. This is unprofessional. And then run to the church. And then runs to the church. Mm -hmm. mm. Pulling the race car. Tell you the truth. Absolute grift. Sick. The more they dig on this woman, you know, if she's been working for two to four years, they're going to find even more. This is yet another front. They can get Bonnie Willis for a felony. That can also get her disbarred. Once again, canceled from the case. If justice is still alive. That's still, the jury's still out on that one. And something tells me the jury selection process won't be fair either. Hmm. Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis may have avoided disqualification from the Trump case, but that decision has done little to put the conservative attacks against her to rest. Oh, the conservatives are attacking me. No, you, you left a gaping hole open that you could drive a truck of righteousness through. This is your corruption. It's not because Republicans are attack happy. Willis is facing a new allegation that she allegedly recorded a call between her and one of the defense lawyers in the case, which we already know her to be strange and paranoid. And this is illegal. This is not how you treat a lawyer of the other side. There has to be a, a, a moniker. They have to at least pretend to be professional guys to the opposition. In a Tuesday interview with legal analyst Phil Holloway, that's the show that we just now showed you. You guys got to check out. In fact, I'll put the link to that down in the description. It is a giant meaty show. You'll learn a lot. I just can't, you know, take it all for this show. Go over there and watch him and give him a sub. He's doing great work, Phil Holloway. Attorney Christopher Kacheroff, that's Harrison Floyd's lawyer on the show, who is a representing Trump co-defendant Harrison Floyd, alleged that Willis recorded a phone call between her and one of Kacheroff's Maryland-based colleagues without their knowledge. Oh, that's a problem in Maryland when you need two parties agreeing to be to a recording to happen and then here's uh they're talking about harrison floyd on twitter responding to his attorney's new claims about willis floyd wrote on x formerly twitter quote bonnie willis illegally recorded a call with my lawyer it's a felony 
She is a DEI di diversity. She is a. We say five years, up to five years. <laughs> five years, you guys. DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Thug with a law license. Will anyone in Georgia stand up to her? That's a <laughs> message to McAfee <laughs> and probably Kemp. Sound like you like Trump. Thug. <laughs> I love how Trump says it. Thug. He says it like with like with all the little, little, little uh thug. <laughs> you know? Criminals, man. Because the men over there, the weak conservative men uh, in Georgia, just to survive, they've had to play it soft. They can't we have to give them strength, encourage them to do what's right. We don't we don't try and tear them down. Try to encourage them to do something right for Harrison Floyd and against Fonnie Willis. Here's, here's the empty head to wrap us up. He's yeah. pushed the limit on what he's saying. And listen, Fonnie Willis has hardly covered herself in glory in this, but I would have a hard time arguing that anything she has said is anything near the attacks that she's faced by him and his supporters. Poor Fonnie Willis facing attacks. The, the, what is this, is, is my, uh, is this show an attack on her? How's that worse than the attack that she did on Trump that she did on recording an opposing lawyer that she does when she waves her hand around in court and nearly, uh, uh, nearly in, and intimidates poor, soft Judge McAfee. Where's the justice? America's watching Fulton County, Georgia, and I'm in shock. And Fulton County has to start doing something against Fonnie Willis to reform yourself. It's time for a reformation, people. Get out the the John Calvin of the legal system and someone address Fonnie Willis for the rest of us Americans who are terrified of ever going to court. You're not going to get justice. This is crazy. I'm Doug in exile. Y'all comment down below what y'all think, man. Drop a like. And again, I'm wishing the best in all you guys' life, man. Uh, sorry I got kind of emotional doing this reaction. But like I say, these are raw, live uh, you know, live, these are live videos, you know, so, um, and again, I love y'all, man, just want to keep it real, I want to spread the love, and I want to spread the truth, man, you know, but um, y'all have an amazing rest of your day, an amazing weekend, y'all take some time out for yourself, come by when you can, we drop videos every single day, we keep you guys updated to what's going on, and I'm wishing you all an amazing weekend, breathe, relax, Crack open a cold one. And you better not put you better not be drinking that moonshine. I won't snitch though. I won't tell you. You drinking that moonshine. Save me some. <laughs> but hey man, I love y'all. And hey, I will catch you beautiful people in the next one. I should have the, the video. If you missed uh this morning's videos, um I will have it somewhere on the screen where you can click out. And boy, it is something, y'all. You definitely want to go check it out. And um, be sure to check your emails. I've emailed a lot of you back um, that has been showing so much support. Uh, just reaching out to me. There's a lot of y'all I still have to email back from almost a week ago, a couple days ago. So I'm, I'm going back on my email, looking at all the beautiful people that have reached out to me, my beautiful family on this channel. So I do appreciate y'all from the bottom of my heart, man. And uh, we've sent out tons of hats today. So check your... I see some of y'all email me saying, Rick, I got the hat. I've seen a couple pictures um sent in and i would show it right now but i know the video has already been long enough but uh tons of you guys got your hats today um and again just just here to be a blessing to you guys man i love y'all and i will catch you beautiful people in the next one peace and love y'all